Hello, hello everybody. Today I am going to read Shakespeare to you. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying that the action in the SNP is so boring over the last few days. Um, you probably would prefer to hear me read Shakespeare. Anyway, we can see Spy going kind of sideways here for, gosh, about two weeks now. It's been trading right around 411. Anyway, if we move higher, we're going to look for resistance around 416. If we move lower, we're going to look for support around 405. Now, here is what's probably going to tell us whether that move is higher or lower. Are we going to get to 416 or are we going to get to 405? Because we're not going to stay at 411 forever. This is highly unusual frankly, to have this little volatility over these few days. Now, let's remember, the SPY is the S&P 500 ETF. There's 500 stocks in the S&P 500. Hence, that's where the name comes from. Every one of those stocks is in a different sector. These are the 11 sectors, and different sectors are in the driver's seat at different times. In other words, if you watch what's going on in these sectors, it'll give you much greater insight into what's going to happen with the SPY. I mean, it's never this easy, but let's just put this out, I'll just put this out there as a hypothetical example. Say every one of these sectors has been completely flat and industrials as the only one that's been moving forward. All right. So the rest of these 10 sectors are totally flat. Industrials has been skyrocketing. This is just hypothetical. Now, suppose industrials is extremely overbought and it's approaching a clear resistance level. Well, if industrials is moving higher and the rest of the sectors are flat, that's gonna make the SPY move higher because SPY is just the aggregate of these. Now, if the one sector that has been driving it higher gets to a clear resistance level and is really overbought, there's a good chance that industrials reverses and that would make the SPY reverse. So sometimes the different things are in the driver's seat at different times. Utilities, materials, real estate, these are such small sectors that they generally don't really have much of an influence on the S&P 500. Energy, even though it's only 4.3%, this can have an influence because energy affects everything. Consumer staples is interesting to watch because sometimes right before the market goes lower, money will start coming into consumer staples. And this is what we call flight to safety. And flights to safety is usually happen right before markets go lower. Communication services, this is the home of Facebook and Google. A lot of people call, um, hmm, I just noticed something. Consumer discretionary is missing. Oh, it must be up here. I guess for some reason it didn't, uh, didn't show up. Anyway, so consumer discretionaries is a sector. But a lot of people say that Amazon is big tech, Google is big tech, Facebook is big tech. Well, that's not true. Amazon is actually in the consumer discretionary sector. Google, Facebook, or communication services, but whatever. It's just an argument. Of, it's just semantics. All right. Now let's go see what is going on. And there's a tug of war going on right now. And I think the rest of these sectors are all kind of neutral right now, although communication services is up against resistance. But right now we have like this tug of war going on between tech and healthcare. Healthcare is the biggest sector. Basically, tech is moving higher. Now let me show you. Here's our tech sector, ETF, XLK. Chance we could be breaking out. What is a breakout? Well, this is when something gets above resistance. Resistance is a large group of sellers. When market's moving higher, there's not a lot of, there's not enough sellers to fill all the buy orders, so buyers have to pay higher prices. But when we get to resistance, there is. Now, if we get above resistance, we call that a breakout. And the reason why that could be bullish is it tells us that the sellers who created the resistance or the investors who created the resistance with their sell orders have left the market. And any time you pull supply off of a market, it sets the stage for the demand side or the buyers to move things higher. If you can understand basic supply and demand economics 101, you can understand how to read a chart. The vast majority of analysts that I've seen in my 25 years on the street really don't understand chart reading, even though some of them are in pretty prominent positions. They just kind of look for these little patterns without really understanding what they mean. But anyway, I don't want to get too distracted. Let's just pay attention to this because if XLK clears this 151 level relatively decisively, it's only a point above it right now and it's $150 security. So 
it's really kind of too soon to know if there's a, a breakout is going to happen. But I think this is one of the most important things to watch to get an insight into which way the S&P 500 is going to move. The other thing is our tech is our healthcare sector. This is the opposite. So this is like a tug of war going on here. Tech is going higher, healthcare is going lower. Now, healthcare is sitting right on support and there's a good chance that this support breaks. When well, support is a large group of investors who are trying to buy around the same price level. When the market's moving lower, it's because there's not enough demand or buy orders to take in all of the supply or sell orders. When we get to a support level, there is. Now, if the support breaks, this tells us something. It tells us that the investors who created the support with their buy orders have left the market. So now it's the opposite of the breakout to the upside. Anytime you take demand out of a market, well, it sets the stage for the supply side or the sell side to push prices lower. This is an interesting pattern here, and this is these patterns are pretty reliable. Descending triangle. Notice how this looks like a triangle, and this line is the descending line, so this is why we call it a descending triangle. These are bearish patterns, meaning that they indicate that there's a good chance. Notice I say good chance, not guarantee, but a good chance the market's going to go lower. Why? Well, notice how we have this clear support around 130, Support is down here and these buyers are patient. These buyers are like, all right, well, whatever, man, you know, stock comes to me or if the shares come to me, I'll buy them. But if not, I'm not going to chase them. We have this nice even support level here where the buyers are just kind of hanging out. So in other words, the buyers are kind of complacent. They're just like, yeah, whatever, man, if I buy the stock, I buy it. Actually, this is an ETF, but if I buy the shares, I buy them. If not, whatever. At the same time, we have this series of what we call lower highs. Markets don't go in straight lines usually. They go in peaks and valleys. And when the peak forms at a level that's lower than the prior peak, it tells us something. As time is going by, it tells us that the sellers are getting more aggressive. In other words, they're willing to accept lower prices. So the descending triangle is a graphical illustration of complacent buyers and aggressive sellers. Whenever you have complacent buyers and aggressive sellers, regardless of what market it is, stock market, crypto market, real estate market, commodities markets, if you have aggressive sellers and complacent buyers, it sets the stage for a move lower. So if you want to learn more, please check out my website, uh, stockmarketjobber.com, and make sure you check back here because I talk about spy pretty much every day. All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy trading, and I will see you soon.